Can you tell me about the history of Sustainable Again and how it developed? First, my name is Frederick Thor. I'm a brand manager at Sustainable Again. Uh, I've been here for eight years. And, but it all began in 1850, so it's been running a bit longer than I've been here. Uh, and at that time, Swedes drank around 45 litres pure alcohol per person a year, and this was a huge public health problem. Uh, the first bolaget, that means company in Swedish, uh, was formed by a group of mine owners in Falun uh, that had got tired of the binge drinking. So the company that was formed had the exclusive right of sales and trade outlets for alcohol beverages. It was the first alcohol monopoly ever. Uh, the sales would be without taking in account profit or advantage, uh, which means that profit should flow to the city and go to public purposes. Uh, so the company worked so well that the model spread throughout the country and in 1955 uh, the 41 local monopolies merged to one, uh, Systembolaget. And uh, Systembolaget is still today a state-owned company that operates without profit motive and the Swedish parliament set the guidelines and framework for the company's operations. What's the role of marketing at Systembolaget? Uh, the role of marketing is uh, two, two. One, uh, to re reinforce why it's good that we sell without a profit motive. Two, to inspire customers to make informed drink-related choices and to adopt a healthy approach to alcohol. So, uh, we use the communication to demonstrate the benefits that System Blog provide to both customers and so 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 society by not selling with a profit motive. Uh, by telling about our rigorous age control, by telling about our efforts to reduce illegal resale of alcohol to minors, by telling about the fact that we don't drive, don't, don't, do not drive additional sales, by describing our uh, wide product range that is available in our stores across the country, and we also communicate about how the monopoly works and the established effect it has that everyone, so, so that everyone can take a stand for or against based on knowledge rather than prejudice. But communication also has an important role in Systemlog, uh, in Systemlog's own channels and arenas, in our meetings with the customers, to deliver knowledge in store, on our website, in our customer magazine, to give knowledge about our wide range of products and give expert advice how to combine food and drinks and to inspire customers to make informed drink related choices and to adopt a healthy approach to alcohol. Why did Sweden decide to use a monopoly approach to the distribution of alcohol? Uh, first of all, uh, Swedish alcohol policy aims to reduce total alcohol consumption and uh, thereby reduce alcohol-related harms. So the monopoly is a necessary condition to, for this. As, as soon as there's a profit uh, motive and as soon as there's more than one player on the market, competition for customers and market mechanisms will start and drive sales and consumption. So limiting alcohol uh, consumption is an important factor in public health. The retail uh, monopoly of alcohol and thereby Systembolag has a key role in public health in Sweden. Can you tell us more about the marketing challenge that you faced as outlined in the case insight? Yeah, the background is that the alcohol monopoly exists to ensure alcohol related problems are as far as possible minimized. So the idea is that if strong beers are sold without a private profit motive, people will drink less. And it works. Swedish alcohol consumption levels are low by European standards. But the idea of selling without a profit motive will only last as long as it has public support. So it's important that Systemlog has customers that are satisfied. But by 2002, uh, it was clear that satisfied customer it, it wasn't it wasn't enough. Systemlog's customer satisfaction Systemlog's customer satisfaction levels continued to rise, but they were also less positive and in favor of the monopoly. So by in June 2002, uh, only 48% of the Swedes uh, wanted to retain the alcohol monopoly. Uh, and because it existed as a result of the uh, EU uh, exemption, and because it had a lot of enemies within Sweden, it was possible that Systembolaget wasn't going to, uh, to survive at, at all much longer uh, without boasting uh, a popular support. 
So the word monopoly uh, had a zero positive association in this context. Uh, only negative ones such as nanny state, lack of freedom, and boring. Uh, but the question was how to get people uh, to like a monopoly. That was the challenge we had. Why is it so important to gain public support? How did you go about obtaining that support? It's the safest way to enable the operations to be conducted in such a way as it is now. We'd focus on public health rather than striving to maximize profit. So. There, there are some evidence for this as well. In 2007, uh, for example, an international group of researchers headed by Harold Holder at the Prevention Research Center in California studied what the effects would be if Systemologues monopoly were to be abolished and replaced, uh, either with sales in licensed store uh, or sales uh, in the food stores. So the findings were clear. The average annual consumption per person aged 15 and over would rise by sort of 29%. Uh, and the study also found that consumption alcohol-related harm would increase both amongst young people and amongst the one who have uh, alcohol abuse. Exactly how have you gone about raising public support? The role of marketing has been... Uh, to tell people about our mission. But before we started that work, we, we did a lot of research, and the findings were that uh, you thought System was a state-owned company, and you, you didn't think it was humans working there uh, at, at the head office. So what we wanted to do was making it more, less state-owned and more like a human being, like our, uh, uh, the people in the store, because you like the people in the store. So what we did was a rebranding. We looked at the shops, we looked at the printing material, our, at our customer paper, at our homepage, and, and so on and the tone of voice, the way we talked in, uh, in the adverts, in the signage, in the, in, in the shops and so on. So I think that was an important role the marketing had, to convey the message uh, as a human being to another human being. What role will marketing play in the future? Yeah, I think, I think the future will be uh, sort of uh, as we have done. I think it's still uh, quite important that we, we, we continue to, to tell uh, our customers and show uh, in, in action what it means to, uh, to when alcohol is not sold by profit motive, that we don't want to drive sales. It's important to still, to still show it. And I think, I think uh, the role for marketing will be to continue inspire customers to make informed drink-related choices and to adopt a healthy approach to alcohol. It's something we have to do all the time because the category of alcohol and all the other uh, producers of alcohol will drive the category for a more romanticized uh, view. They, they want to drive sales and we, we have a, a large mission to inform uh, and uh, inform about uh, a healthy approach to alcohol. Thanks, Frederick.